anyway. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow is the deadline for registering to vote in the upcoming May primary election. Early voting begins May 1, goes through the 11th. The election day is May 14. But April 23 is your deadline to vote in the primary. You can do that at 400 West Stevens Street to the Berkeley County Clerk's Voter Registration Office. Or you can do it online at the Secretary of State's website, GoVoteWV.com. GoVoteWV.com. And you can call the clerk's office, too, at 264-1989 if you have any questions on that. That's very important to do if you want to partake in the upcoming election, uh, primary election here in May. And also, that's the only time you get a chance to vote for school board members, uh, for instance, too. And judicial. And judicial. That's correct. That's all May only's now. And speaking of judicial candidates, Bill, Mm -hmm. uh, we have one who has done her research Yes. And I know this because she came in with food this morning. <laughs> yeah. Where has the, the thought developed that if they bring in food, we ask easy, simple questions? Because no if they food. bring in food, we ask easy, simple questions. It's I've, how it's developed. I've been promulgating that uh, theory, too. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that lovely pie. Carmela Cesare is a candidate for judge, and she brought in a homemade cherry pie. Carmela, good morning. You are so welcome to come in this morning. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And it's old family recipe, and, I understand. And I've heard of, uh, for broadcasters, I've heard of paola and plugola, but I have yet to see paola. Paola, so. yes, <laughs> this is paola. And it smells delicious, too. Uh, what's the uh, the family uh, secret on the cherry pie there? Come that is my mother-in-law's recipe, and it's just a delicious recipe. Um, we have it at most of our um, our uh, celebrations our family dinners and i thought it might be a nice pie to bring in for y'all today and carmela bill is italian so nobody I, messes with her this morning you understand <laughs> my pa's on here right uh, let me make an offer to you you can't refuse <laughs> she'll put you away from that <laughs> yeah carmela you're running for family court judge i am yeah yes, t- I am. tell us about this position Okay, well, this position was created by the legislature. It's an open position. Mm -hmm. It was created by the legislature in 23 um, because the growth in our, um, the population growth in our community. This is a new position for the 24th um, Family Court Circuit, and it covers all of Berkeley and Jefferson counties. Mm -hmm. And Family Court, um, it hears all things family. It hears divorce, annulment, separate maintenance, spousal support, child support, child custody, um, um, uh, domestic violence orders, and uh, we also do marriages. It's kind of saved like the nice part for last. Yes, okay, this yes. Stuff is disturbing Gotta have stuff. something fun to do. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, who you are, your past, and what brought you to this point. Well, um, I came here to West Virginia about over 30 years ago. I came to uh, Morgantown from, I, um, my birth family is from Maine, the state of Maine. And I chose to go to school at the, in Morgantown at WVU School of Law. It was a good school. Um, I got a great education there. I met my husband there. Um, we became, of the East, became aware of the Easter Panhandle, and we wanted to come here to start our family and start our careers. Um, we live in Shepherdstown. We've lived there for over 30 years. We've raised three beautiful daughters there. Um, my oldest has recently graduated from WVU. She's up in Boston now working on a clinical doctorate in occupational therapy, and we couldn't be more proud of her. Congratulations. Just, thank you. She just finished her first year. My second daughter is finishing up. She has about one more. She graduates next December um, from the WVU nursing program. And my third daughter, she's 19. Um, she is a sophomore at WVU as well. So our family are all proud mountaineers. Well, and, and very well educated, too. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what got me to this point running for office or f- for, um, for family court is uh, when this open position create, uh, was created, I took a look around and I thought of all the potential candidates who might throw their hat in the ring and I realized that I was that I am a a very qualified candidate for this position Mm -hmm. and um, my goal when I was in law school was to serve the the public I was fortunate enough in law school to be able to participate in the clinic now at WVU they have a number of different clinics but back 
the early 90s. I was at WVU between 90 and 93. Um, they only had one clinic, and you could only go become a participant through lottery. You had to put your name in, and I was lucky enough to be able to participate in that clinic, and that got me started on my public interest career. And that was my goal. I always wanted to work in the public interest, and I feel I've done that over the past 30 years. I came out of law school as a public defender, and I worked there for a number of years, and I'm proud to say I got, <clears throat> I had one year when I was in trial, a lot, Mm -hmm. And I actually got the first um, Public Defender of the Year award. Oh, congratulations. I, I don't think there are many public defenders who realize that because I don't talk about, you know, I don't tell everybody that, but I have that award on my wall and I'm very proud of it. Cool. Um, so after that, um, I ended up, I worked, I left there. I think I worked for Kevin Mills briefly and then I just realized I can do this on my own. So I opened up my own law firm. Andy and I, my husband Dandy and I started our family. He came and joined me at the law firm. Um, and I worked mainly as I felt more comfortable working, you know, working representing indigent people charged with crimes. I also worked in abuse and neglect matters, representing the best interest of the, as a guardian ad litem, representing the best interest of the children um, in abuse and neglect matters. I also did guardianship and conservatorships, and then going back to the abuse and neglect matters, I also represented families, um, you know, different parties, you know, sometimes the, the father, sometimes the mother, depending on how I was appointed. Um, for, I've also worked as CJA counsel in federal court, which is essentially court-appointed counsel for people, again, who are indigent and can't afford court-appointed counsel. Um, I then, um, after a while, decided to go into the, because I, I like different experiences, mm -hmm. um, so it was time for me to to go over to the prosecution side. So I worked for the as a felony prosecuting attorney for Berkeley County for a number of years. Um, and then I chose to leave there. Was that under Pamela Games Neely? Pam Neely, yeah. yep. And um, that was a good experience. For sure. And then um, I left there. I worked for a while as a guardian ad litem uh, representing the voice of the children in contested custody matters in family court. And um, during that time, it was suggested that I run for magistrate in Jefferson County, which I did. And I won. And I have been fortunate enough to serve the citizens of Jefferson County. Um, since 2020, I started early because my predecessor wanted to retire. So I started in July of 2020. I've been doing that ever since, and I love it. I think um, you know my the people who I work with in my office, and you know the other magistrates and the assistants and the clerks and the bailiffs are all just fabulous people, and um, I couldn't be more proud to have that opportunity and I'm hoping that the citizens of both Berkeley and Jefferson mm -hmm. will give me that opportunity to bring my skill set to the family court. Well, that's certainly a very well balanced and rounded background, mm -hmm. Bill Stubblefield. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Camilla. Glad, morning. glad to see you. Uh, I've, uh, uh, I've seen you at a lot of events recently. You're very active in the community. You're, you're support of the Boys and Girls Club. You're at the fundraiser the other night at hospice and several others. Uh, I admire the fact that someone is so engaged in the community. Uh, could you say, could you tell us some of the other other groups that you're associated with, affiliated with? Well, for many years, about nine years, I was on the board of the Contemporary American Theater Festival. Oh, see. Okay. Um, I also am active in my church. Mm -hmm. um, I served on the pastoral council of my church, and now I act as bread and cup minister, and um, I do my best to pitch in when I can if the if my schedule sure. um, permits me as a magistrate we are we have a lot of um, you know being on call takes up a lot of your time I also have a small business in Shepherdstown that takes a lot of my time um, you know when I'm not doing these other things so I sort of pitch in here and there okay. where needed um, I have enjoyed campaigning because it's enabled me to I've learned how to sell tips uh, over the past weekend, and I can count those tips out faster than you know. So um, I definitely um, 
think I might be pitching in at some of the, the volunteer fire departments. Um, they'll let me every now and then. So I have, those are mainly the things that I've done. I feel that my small business, even though it's a for-profit business, we're still looking for that profit. And so I feel um, that what the service that we provide to the community, um, it's Tonic Herb Shop. It provides um, sustainably sourced organic medicinal herbs and herbal products. A lot of people automatically think of CBD. When I say sure. that, it's not a CBD store. It's actually, <clears throat> I got a, 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 a master's in therapeutic herbalism um, a number of years ago. And I met another herbalist in the area, and we really wanted to bring <clears throat> that service to the community. There are a lot of people who um, like um, to um, to use or work with herbs to help maintain their health and wellness, and that's what we're about. And so that takes a little bit of my energy too, but I feel that that is a public service to bring that because we're probably the I think there's one other herbs uh, store like ours um, in the Washington, D.C. area, and that's over in Maryland mm. called Smile Herb Shops. So I've, there are many, many people who love us and come from distances. Well, your your involvement has impressed a lot of people. I'm looking at some of the folks that endorsed you. Uh, uh, David Greenberg, a uh, uh, retired family court judge. David Sanders, a, ju a circuit judge, which many of us know and respect very, very much. Kenny Laymaster, Randy Smith, uh, sheriff in Berkeley County. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, so an impressive group of folks that know you and are willing to endorse you. Uh, well done. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We also have... Carmela, um, again, with the sir thing with Bill, again, if we call him <laughs> sir too many times, he's going to insist we all call him sir. Yeah, I think that's a nice habit to get into, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to point out I have a couple more endorsers who didn't make my rat okay. card, and they are Kev um, um, Her Leonard and uh, Helen Harris. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And um, as you all know, but maybe our listeners don't know, they're very active in the community. Mm former um, small business owners. Um, they are the curators of the Sumner Raymner School Museum currently. And um, Leonard was Berkeley County Citizen of the Year for 1996. And Helen was Berkeley County Citizen of the Year for 2012. And also Kevin Knowles has also kindly offered me his endorsement. And he is the mayor of Martinsburg. And I'm very honored by everybody's endorsement I'm very proud you mentioned Raymond school were you involved in that film production that uh, Leonard and Helen recently pushed through I was not but I watched it and it was amazing well done exceptional yeah well done. I highly recommend yeah. people it's on YouTube and WRNR is uh, I think yes we, we, we do run it on TV 10 yeah. uh, multiple yeah. times a week yeah. mm -hmm. Mark Cram very good. Well, good morning, good and morning. Uh, glad to have you here. I think I just have to say having an herb store in Shepherdstown is entirely appropriate. <laughs> I think Shepherdstown wouldn't be complete if it didn't have some sort of an herb uh, store or uh, yeah. place. So uh, it, it fits, and uh, good for you for uh, maintaining that. Okay, yes. um, you mentioned this is an open seat. In other words, it's it's an additional seat that didn't exist before. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So uh, is that because of the volume of growth, the, the, the number of cases that the family court has to handle. And uh, what is that from? Is that simply because the population has increased? Or is it unfortunate that we're seeing more people having situations that have to be taken care of in family court? Population growth. Mm -hmm. okay, simply that's... population growth. Um, there's really not much more of an answer to that, except for that, you know, it's not just the family court who's experiencing the, the growth and or the additions. Um, Jefferson County was um, broken off, and it is now in the circuit. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, fam the family court circuit, 24th family court circuit, is its own circuit. Family courts have their own circuits. And, again, Berkeley and Jefferson is the 24th circuit, which I'm running for. Mm -hmm. The regular circuit, which is comprised of the magistrates and the circuit court judges, um, currently we are Berkeley, Morgan, and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So when I was a public defender, I used to ride that circuit all the time, going between Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan, up and down Route 9 for 
for years. And um, but now, because of the population growth, they've broken Berkeley and Jefferson off. I mean, sorry, Berkeley and Morgan off oh, to be their right. own circuit, and Jefferson has become its own circuit. We've picked up an extra circuit court judge. We've also picked up an extra magistrate. Mm -hmm. I think you picked up a Joe Ferretti uh, endorsement, too. He says, Carmela has worked the uh, walked the walk for many years in her career. Highest respect for her. Thank you very Jeff much, Red. Joe. I appreciate that. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, you're fine. And uh, I was just going to say, certainly over the years, uh, we've seen, you know, the circuit, the number of circuit court judges and magistrates has increased, mm -hmm. simply trying to keep a pace with the the volume that uh, that growth in the eastern panhandle has yeah. brought. Um, we, yeah, magistrates um, hit the ground running, you know, every day. We're just, it just is coming at us all the time, and we just... We keep doing it, you know, every day, and it's it's a great job. But very busy, very grateful to the legislature for recognizing that this part of the state is growing quickly, and we needed to, to add these judges. Mm -hmm. The family uh, court judge, I would think, would be the most emotional of all of them, is mm -hmm. not? I, 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 it would take a special type of person that would be the family court judge. You are correct, sir. Um, and I, sir, sir, I did it again. <laughs> I did it again. Give up. It just rolls off my tongue. Um, I think that's nice. We <laughs> ought to have her here every day. <laughs> so it does take um, patience, yeah. compassion, and my background. My whole career has been walking people through traumatic experiences. Even people charged with crimes, they won't act like it but they're not feeling very good about themselves and they don't need it to be piled on more uh, about what's going on with them and as a magistrate I'm sensitive to that I'm sensitive to the people who come before me um, in emergency protective orders they're going see, because emergency protective orders turn into domestic violence um, here uh, cases in family court we get the emergencies people come in they're completely stressed out they don't know which way to go they feel that they're in danger we do those hearings and we you know review the case it's an ex parte hearing which means just one party because it's an emergency and we review the case with the person take evidence to see if it meets the um, elements of the statute to to issue that emergency protective order but that's another example of me working with people who are in a a very uncomfortable situation, confused, don't know which way to turn. Um, and I've done this my whole career, as I've described. I've worked with victims um, who, uh, in felony matters, who feel who felt, you know, violated on for various reasons, um, and traumatized by that. P um, families in abuse, abuse and neglect matters. You know, these parents, <laughs> they don't. You know, they something went on in the family that that kept them from being able to care appropriately for their children, whether it was addiction or something else. And I've helped to walk them through that. I've helped to walk these kids back to reunification with their family when it's appropriate. So, having saying all that, I I have experience working with people who are going through a tough situation in the family court, and, and the in the courtroom is an uncomfortable place. For many people, just because they don't, they're not there every day, and it's confusing. And also, um, in family court, if this stress is made worse because they're going through the dissolution of a marriage, or contested custody matter regarding their children, or some other contested matter involving the personal life or the division of property, and I'm sensitive to that. And I'm sensitive to that in magistrate court as well. And I, in magistrate court, I use a skill set I've developed over the years to make the courtroom a comfortable place, an inviting place to people so they feel that they can express themselves. And most importantly, people want to feel heard. And um, I do my best to make sure people have, in, in magistrate court, have been able to say their piece and and really let them 
say what they need to say before I make my ruling. And I'm uh, going to do that in family court as well. Uh, I applaud you for making, uh, giving people their voice. Uh, what you have not said, and I think it's important, are you, are you willing to make a tough decision, make a, a, a ruling that would obviously hurt someone because someone's going to be hurt? Yeah, I do that a lot as a magistrate. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could give everybody what they want because that's the mm. easy way out. But that's not, that's just not possible. And that's part of the skill set of being the judge is really turning on your ears and really listening, trying to figure out, okay, where are these parties coming from? What are they actually telling me? Because especially if it's people who don't have lawyers, sometimes they'll leave the most important part out, so you have to be able to ask those questions. But yes, I am quite capable of making difficult decisions. And you know, I make them every time I walk into the courtroom. Um, I am faced with that potential uh, uh, possibility, and huh. I do that. Carmela Cesare is our guest here, candidate for judge, and uh, just a little bit of time to go here. Carmela, you made reference to my birth family a couple times and Maine. Is there more to that story? Just that, um, you know, Millinocket, Maine, central Maine, it's, it's, it's a rural, you know, Maine is a rural state. It's very similar to West Virginia, so I almost felt like I was just coming to a different type of home when I came here. But we, the family is from central Maine. Um, it's a paper mill town. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather came over from Italy and helped build it. What My, town? In uh, Catignano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's Absolutely. In Pes P Pescara. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually went over there and saw it. It's beautiful. It's stuck up in the side of a a mountain. As is every town in Italy. In Italy, Italy. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I called you, sir. There you go. Oh, yeah. Got um, one back. I didn't hear that. I was doing uh, something else, Rob. Of course you missed it. The, the, course score, you missed the it. score now is 7-1, to one, Rob. Okay. <laughs> I got an hour and a half but, to go. <laughs> but at least she's on the scoreboard. <laughs> Barely. Uh, Carmela, we've got about a minute left. Why don't you tell our audience why they should vote for you for judge? Because I am the most qualified candidate, and i that's why I'm running. I believe I am the most qualified candidate in this race. Um, I have um, extensive courtroom experience and judicial experience, and I want to bring that skill set to the family court. And my goal is, in, as a family court judge, to ensure that the courtroom is a place where the work is done efficiently, the parties feel heard, and most importantly, the children are protected. Where can people go to find out more about your candidacy? Um, I have um, my website is um, Carmela Chesery for Family Court dot com I think but if you just type that in it should come up I also have a Facebook page as well and right. you can also email me if you have any questions thank you so much for bringing in a pie <laughs> welcome and th that that is to be shared is it not Camilla? just because it's on Rob's <laughs> end of the table you're gonna have to make a ruling all. here okay <laughs> you have to give us a joint custody of this pie you, know? you all have joint custody of the pie <laughs> sorry Rob <laughs> Well, as a judge, I'm sure she can back the fact that possession is nine-tenths of the law, Bill. <laughs> Therefore, nine-tenths of the pie seems to be bound for me. Hey, uh, Carmela, best of luck to you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. In. Thank you.